This episode is brought to you by HBO's The Regime. Academy Award winner Kate Winslet stars in the new HBO original limited series, The Regime. With her nation on the verge of greatness, the Chancellor, played by Winslet, becomes increasingly paranoid and delusional. She will stop at nothing to prove her worth on the world stage or end up a national disaster. From executive producers of Succession, HBO's The Regime premieres this Sunday on Max. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. In Astoria, in the city where I was born. Right. I love Astoria. I call yeah. it Astoria Polis, like Constantinopolis, Istanbul. Astoria and it's Astoria Polis. Polis because I think <laughs> I it's I don't the, know. It's got it's gotten much nicer since I used to live there. Yes. It was kind of uh, gritty when I lived there, let's just yes. say that. These are the plaintiffs, Moharam Balkenli and Milos Popovic. Moharam says he parked his car on the streets of New York City and got two tickets. Then, two days later, the defendant towed it because he said the cops told him to. But he called the local police station and the car wasn't on the tow list. So he doesn't understand why the defendant towed it. They're suing for $5,000, the cost of the tow, plus missed work. This is the defendant, Peter Keene. He says the plaintiff Moharam is what he calls a gypsy. He sells cars with bogus plates off the street and then disappears. He tows a lot of these cars because the police keep an eye out for the cars, and he does what the police tell him to do. Bottom line, they had a car on the street with a for sale sign on it, had tickets on the car because they didn't pay the meter, and the cops told him to tow it. End of story. He's accused of snatching a car off the street. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $700 for lost wages. All parties, please raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. You see to come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome in. Okay, Muharram Balkanli. Yes, Your Majesty. Oh, I love Your Majesty. I love countries that say that. <laughs> um, and Milos Popovic. Yes. Okay. U.S. Index International Corporation is your company? U.S. Index. U.S. Index. You are suing VIP Auto Body, represented here by Peter Keene? Yes. For $5,000, according to you, your damages are in the $24,000 range for, according to you, illegally towing you. You have a counterclaim against him for $700, because if he's going to sue you for $4,700, in lost wages, you're going to sue him back for your driver and yours lost wages. Yes. Okay. I cannot wait to hear how you get to $24,000 um, over a tow. What yeah. happened? Um, your Excellency, on I'll specific that time, I was trying to sell my car that I was using for corporation, my personal use. All right, so you have the car, and what kind of car is it? It's a Porsche Cayenne. So what happens? You leave the car, it's a Porsche Cayenne of what year? Also. 2006, and you leave it parked where? Parked on uh, Broadway and corner of Steinway, which is next to the Chase Bank. And there is 24-7 In Astoria, camera. in the city where I was born. Right. I love Astoria. I call yeah. it Astoria Polis, like Constantina Polis, Istanbul. Astoria, and it's Astoria Polis. Polis. <laughs> because I think I it's I don't the, know. It's, got, it's yeah. gotten much nicer since I used to live there. Yes. It was 
kind of uh, gritty when I lived there. Let's just yes. say that. Now it's a big firm bar, a bunch of nice places and stuff. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so you left a park on San, or as my mother always said, Estanway a street, which is what I thought it was <laughs> called until I was in my 20s, Estanway a street. As, and how long had you left a park there? Uh, three days, you know. Why three days? I had an emergency with one of the food trucks that I own. This is my other company. So right. why was it there three whole days? Because I, my understanding is you're not allowed to keep it on the city streets for more than 48 hours? No, it's 10 days, no, Your Honor. I have all the regulations for Roto. I got the regulations for a car being left on the street. I think 72 hours. The police give you seven days, and then they go, they mark the tires. Okay. But this wasn't towed for that reason. This was towed because he had Virgin Island license plates on the car, uninsured, unregistered, and he knows he's a dealer with a for sale sign on it. Wait, he, what do you mean he's a dealer with a for sale sign? He has a for sign? sale sign on it. That Objection car got, on. That Wait, car got five tickets in Astoria. Five tickets in, that, in, Astoria, five tickets in that location, yeah. other location in Astoria. Okay, but I how many did the car have on three, it when you three towed tickets. it? How many? Yeah, three tickets. How many? Did you visually see that, or did your driver no, we, see that, or we, you know we it? We towed for the police department. So the police department scouted the car and saw the car was there for several days. It was ticketed for, I think, a meter, and it was ticketed for having a for sale sign on it. After the third day, the police officer got sick and tired of looking at it and had a road towed. Road tow's a program with New York City for abandoned cars, stolen cars, improper registered car if they fake plate on it. That's why it was towed. They okay, but when you say that it had no registration and island plates, what, what island are we talking about? Virgin Islands. Okay, well, it's you, not even in the United States. Oh, oh, well, <laughs> listen to me. What were the tickets for? Uh, Can for, you tell me, or are you just going to yeah. guess? Oh, like, I got do you a see copy it? of it here. Yeah. I got a copy of all the tickets in the, in the neighborhood. There's five tickets. I don't want the neighborhood. I want the tickets that were <laughs> okay, on it when it's you marked. towed. It's marked right there. Okay. And I have the roto paperwork from the police department. Hold on, just slow down. What's failure to display Muni rec? Uh, he was in a metered spot. You're supposed to put a, this, uh, the paper when you paid a meter right in the dashboard. Oh, Muni receipt, all yeah. right. Okay, and then there was a stack of tickets on it, but there was one ticket a day before, then the officer saw the car there for three days. Uh, the car was probably there a lot more than three days then. Well, he only but saw it But it said for three. vehicle for sale, dealer only. What does that mean? Uh, he, did, he has a for sale sign on it. Right. He's, what they do is we call them gypsies. What, now, what, just tell me what it means that you can't do that. If I'm yeah, selling a lot, hold on. I saw I'm just, stop. They, what is okay. illegal? Putting a for sale sign for on my car? For sale sign on a car in New York City is illegal. Uh, you can't sell a car on the street in New York City. Are you serious? Um, yeah, serious. Like I can't. That's why you got a ticket for that. No, that's what's astounding me. So you can't like uh, like in Miami, people will spray paint on the back of their window. I can see that because <laughs> now they ticket. can't see out and they're driving like idiots. But that's a ticket. That's a ticket just for yeah, displaying yeah. that your car is for yeah. sale. Uh, I have a copy of the title front and back. This was a salvage car from Texas. State Farm paid out on it. It's abandoned on the New York City street. I have a copy How of is it. it abandoned? Because it was there more than 48 hours? Yeah, it's not registered. It's not insured. Nothing. Fake plates on it. You have made a statement that the plates were false. Prove it. Right here. That's, I read it. That doesn't say the plates are false. No, does it, it says it just says the car's unregistered on the city the street. The car said what it says is that they were unable to find proof of registration in Finest. What is Finest? What is the program That's software the computer Finest? The system they use when they run driver's they license. They use license when they run plates. driver's license where? Yes. New York City. Okay, so it's a New York driver's license, the New York uh, and the New York registration yeah. database, yeah, it's right? A database, That's all it means. Okay. It means that okay. All right. So it didn't have a false New York plate. It had a plate on it that didn't was... Didn't belong. Yeah. Well, it didn't belong depending on how long it's there. But the bottom line is that there is how many... T is it, are you the driver? Do you, yes, can you Tom come on up? He's the driver. Oh, he's the driver or no? He's a tow driver. It gets towed, and right. according to you, it was towed because the police called you? Yes, the 114 priest had called us. Okay. Uh, how do you log the, um, did you remember how many tickets were on there? No, just a bunch. That's what I saw. A bunch. <laughs> yeah. How do you log, or how do you record? Is there, is there a, a, a method of keeping track of the police phone call? The Department of Consumer Affairs makes us put in a log book. When we get the call and when we show up on, on the scene. Then the officer meets us on the location 
and shows us the car to hook up. Okay, and did that happen in this case? Yes. Okay, and does the officer write anything? Yes. Let me see what the officer writes. So why are you suing him if the police decided to tell you? Why is it his fault? You see, it's a personal choice, Your Honor. It's what a personal of, choice whether you want to feed your children. I'm, I'm this is his go, job. I yeah. understand, Your Honor, but you know, if you make things as a Sufi, I look at the books. Bakara 136 says, make no discrimination between books, prophet, religion, and people. Make distinction being good all, all evil things. He had to choose. Dude, you're he not even the, there. He doesn't know anything except for that your car is, it wasn't discriminating admit, against you. The police officer looks at a car, it's got Virgin Island plates and he just, does, makes, he's like sick of it, writes tickets and calls them. What, what, what did they do wrong? But if you so look now at, let's discuss the rest of your lawsuit because your lawsuit is for 295, which is what somebody paid for the tow. Which one of you paid that? For I did pay it. All right. All right. And, uh, now what you guys, you guys think that they are a team that are selling cars? 100%. How do you know that? We call, listen. Uh, you know, wait, a team that are listen, selling cars on New York City streets? Yeah, in Queens, they're having a lot of problems in the 15, the 14, the 102, the 108. We call them gypsies. They sell cars on the street. They'll sell you a car with no warranty. They're supposed to warranty. This car's a salvage car. Right. No, you'll never know it's a salvage car. So they'll take it and they'll register it for you, and you'll never know you bought a salvage car. The car, the car looked like a toilet bowl. I don't think you have any of it. All right, so now that's $4,700 in lost wages. How do you figure? Um, on that day, Your Honor, it's about 10.30. The car was stalled. I could not find it. And we had a meeting in Brooklyn at 1.30 with a lady who wanted to fix her bathroom, little bathroom renovation. Okay. And uh, I could not make it because I didn't have the vehicle. And previous that, to that... three hours you couldn't make it to Brooklyn in some other way? I didn't because... Because of this police department issue, they told my carpet truck, they told my construction truck, they told my food truck, oh. they told Who's my personal car. Him no, or the police? No, the police department oh. prior to that. So this was the end of the line, punched my corporation, and I couldn't. I took to tow So he has to pay you $4,700. Why? Because you didn't make it to an appointment three hours it's later? They, they took somebody else's construction, Your Honor. If you have he all lost. these other vehicles that the city of New York, the city of New York apparently is yeah. angry with you or they're picking on you or something. They love me. I think I have, <laughs> I have Italian last name and Turkish Islamic <laughs> last name. And I have this officer who's chasing me for my Mont Blanc that I did not get. You know, For so your what? Th th this is a, some issue. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. So do you think tow truck companies are generally on the up and up or are they a little shady when it comes to towing when they shouldn't? I think they're a little shady. What do you say? I've had a situation where my car was actually towed and I was told that I was only going to get 300 or have to pay 300 and I ended up paying 900. Okay. What do you say? You've been sitting in the back quietly. Hi. <laughs> uh, I think so. I think it's... They're shady? Yes. Why? Uh, because I'm a girl so they kind of easy to cheat because I don't know. Well, doesn't have a knowledge. But if you're somebody like Ronda Rousey, you just put him in a headlock, <laughs> right? Going inside the courtroom. They're picking on you. They're picking so, on me. But personally. you have all these other vehicles that they ended up uh, that they I ended up towing, but you had no way to get to Brooklyn in three I hours. I am not car dealer. I didn't have no money. Right. So they owe you forty seven hundred for that. And what else? How else do you get to that? Those twenty four thousand. Uh, the guy who bought the car assumed it because he gave me partial payment. A week later, because they're not professional to tow you. Okay, hold on one second. When when he gave you a partial payment, how long after the tow? A it week was later. About three or four days later. Three or four days after you re after you got the the car back. I sold it. You sold it. It came back to me because the transmission is damaged. Okay. Tell me, what evidence do you have that the tow caused the damage? One of my f truck cargo truck was towed by another company like this. They broke the drive shaft, the differential. Now it's in Mercedes. I got an estimate for 5,800, which I have to fix. Okay. And so your evidence of them doing something wrong is that in another case somebody else did. <laughs> because it's a okay. four-wheel drive. How did, you, how did you tow the, okay, the... We towed it. And he's not licensed. How did you okay. tow First we're licensed to tow for the police department. We go with a few... Stop talking, gentlemen. Stop talking. Stop talking. Go ahead. First of all, I got 35 years experience. He has 40 years in towing. Okay. So he knows how to tow. We send the flap it over. We have these go jacks that go under the, go under the wheels. And they go against the wheels. He jack it, lifts the car up. 
then the car gets slid onto the flatbed. No damage. So it was flatbed. It's impossible to damage the car. And then we roll it off and we take the go-jacks off. It's not impossible, but you, well, but you uh, okay. So let me ask you a question. You're counterclaiming against them $700 for lost wages because of what? Well, he's suing me for his lost wages. Why can't I sue him over here today wasting a day here? Okay. And Tommy, I got to pay Tommy's salary too. Okay. Right to get right. Tommy back on the street. <laughs> All right. Um, gentlemen. Uh, Do I have I, a question? No. I, I cannot tell you how out of gas you are on this case. You have a $295 tow that was ordered to be done Just, by the police department, and you are suing the tow company for $5,000 and claiming you're out $24,000. The tow company just does what the police say to do. Now, that doesn't mean they get to do it recklessly. If they damaged a car, you've got a case. So I need to see the evidence from an expert, not from your flapping gums, that they damaged your car in this tow. And if your evidence is, well, a tow truck once damaged a car in another tow, that's not evidence. When they're okay. dropping, Your Honor, because okay. of the damage that Do you that have they a caused? mechanic statement, yes or no? I will get it. It's no, in the, the, I got let me the introduce you. This is a black dress, this is the trial, and it's over. Verdict for the defendant. And as for your kind of claim against him, zero. It's just, you know, I know you did it just in retaliation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Well, here he is. Uh, everybody's after you. I guess so. Okay, right next to him. But uh, you don't have any proof of this. Maybe, what's going on? Um, I think I've been uh, made a space code or something, racial discrimination. Whatever it is. You think that's what's going on, really? I guess so. Well, you know, in the courtroom, you have to have the evidence. You know, you can't right. just come in and say something. You have to prove it. I think uh, maybe I should bring a case against the uh, officer that had the car told if I can obtain the copies, since in this court it was available, it should be given me also. Uh-huh. All right, that's so you're not done with this case yet. Right, you're going to keep fighting this thing. I think so. Keep Absolutely. fighting. Okay. Yeah. All in favor, head that All right. way. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Step on in here. Tommy, you come on in too, all right? All right. So it happened all the time here? Or? You know, we come across these guys. They're gypsies. They're selling cars on the street. He was trying to sell me the car when he came to my shop. He said, give it to me for 10000 so uh, you know, you, so that's not legal, right? Would he that offer to you to buy the car like that? No, it's not legal. legal. It's not legal, but the car looks like a toilet bowl. It's a rat. I don't want to buy that. Uh huh. All right. Anything, Tommy? What do you got to say? No, nah, we won. That's all that matters. I mean. Okay, Kurt, here's the deal. The defendant has the cover of the police authorizing the tow. If that happens, they're playing by the book. They can easily rely on the law. Now, we'll do it for this case litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This episode is brought to you by HBO's The Regime. Academy Award winner Kate Winslet stars in the new HBO original limited series, The Regime. With her nation on the verge of greatness, the Chancellor, played by Winslet, becomes increasingly paranoid and delusional. She will stop at nothing to prove her worth on the world stage or end up a national disaster. From executive producers of Succession, HBO's The Regime premieres this Sunday on Max. This is the plaintiff, Tia Bins. She says she loaned her son the defendant money in 2011. And unfortunately, he has no respect for his mother, and she can't get him to pay her back. He has since blocked her number from his phone in an attempt to run away from his financial obligations. She is fed up with him and is suing him here and now for every penny of the $400 her son still owes her. This is the defendant, Melvin Richard Hill Jr. He says his mom abandoned him when he was three years old and came back into his life about six years ago when she told him she didn't have much longer to live due to a disease. He would go to her house twice a week, buy her food, get her medicine, take care of her. And as a thank you, she told him to buy her a TV. And now she turns around and sues him for it in court. Unfortunately, his mother's trying to take advantage of him, and he won't be a party to it any longer and wants the judge to set her straight. He's accused of making mom mad.
All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says her son's a deadbeat who borrowed money in 2011 and snubbed her. But the defendant says he did a lot for his mom, and this was a yeah. gift. It's the case of family matters, but not when it comes to looks. have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Tia Bins. Yes, ma'am. You are suing Melvin Richard Hill Jr., yes. your son, for... $400 that you say he still owes you, the balance of a loan that he hasn't fully repaid, correct? Exactly. Tell me what's going on. Okay. Uh, I haven't seen him since Thanksgiving. I miss him and love him so much. But he got to the point he was borrowing money from me, and it got to the point it was so high, I went ahead and had him sign a promissory note that he would pay me back at some given time. And he hasn't done He paid everything, but... Uh, four hundred and twenty dollars. How mu how high did it get? It was six hundred and twenty. So when did you loan him that money? Throughout okay. different times. Yeah, up all the way up to when he signed this. It was on February, two thousand eleven. How long had it been before that that you hadn't seen your son? Oh, it's been about ten, fifteen years. Well, he came down. He was nice enough to come down when I had uh, surgery. I had to have a tumor removed. So he came down and bought my mom. And they were there when I had surgery. Did you raise him? No, not really. Who raised him? His father. And were you around or no? No, I was in another state. Doing what? I was married to another person. His father got custody of my kids. How did he get custody? He just took them and wouldn't let me have them back. And I didn't have, I went to court to try to fight it. And I didn't have a good enough reason, so he was allowed to keep them. Hmm. All right, so you reconnect. When you say you haven't seen him since Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving last year. Uh, why haven't you seen him? He, he started a new job. He was working at the post office. He hadn't gotten completely set with that yet, and he was working at Wendy's, I believe it was. <laughs> so he really didn't have the money. So that's when I told him. Well, then go ahead and buy me a 40-inch or 39-inch Vizio TV, and we'd call it even. And but that if he doesn't have the money to pay million. you, what, what money is he going to buy the Vizio? Was that cheaper, do you? Yeah, because the TV wasn't about, about $280, and he okay. owed me 400 so I was going to let him go by with the rest of it, and right. it never happened. Okay. Was any of this by text or by email? I have one text from him where he said that he couldn't pay me this weekend, but he would pay me the next weekend. Let's would see you it. like to see that? I, d I do. Uh, Mr. Hill, what's going on? My mom, like she said, left when I was three. Uh, I went down to stay with her down south in Texas uh, when I was 15. Uh, Did you see her between three and 15? No. At all? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, did you hear a different story than the one that she said? Yeah. Um, in other words, did you hear a different story than the one that she said, which is she went to court, she fought, but the custody was given to your dad? I've never even heard any of that story. We've never so, discussed it with yeah, our kids. I've never heard anything about that. Well, it's kind of the first thing I would discuss at 15 <laughs> to figure out, or, or once I became a man, is say, hey, where you been? Well, yeah. What happened? Where you been? <laughs> wow. Okay, so go ahead. I went to school down there, and I was looking for a change of scenery from where so I was. So you were just school. happy to be there? Yeah. Actually, I was. So, okay. Um, anyways, uh, time goes by. I moved back up here. Um, things happen to her in Atlanta where she gets cancer and supposed to have a few months to live. We go down to pick her up. I'm spending two days a week with her, if not more. Um, she, at this time, she's getting phone bills, you know, getting phone cards for her phone. So I suggest to her, hey, why don't we get, you know, you get a cell phone on my plan. Uh, I do that. Uh, she decides she doesn't want it. Um, during this time, I borrow money for her because I was in between jobs, from changing her. jobs from her. Yes, from her. Okay, so how much money did you borrow from her? Um, at that time, it was about 600 bucks because it was 400 for rent. Did you end up paying 200 back? I ended up paying more than 200 How back. much did you pay back? I paid her about, altogether, it was three payments of 180, 120, and 150. All right, and uh, what was the six hundred dollars for? Four hundred well, was was for rent, and the rest was for the phone bill. And there's probably like thirty dollars left. And according there. to you, that's your joint phone bill with her. It was because she was supposed to have kept that phone, and Correct. you were still getting charged. Correct. So were you charged the following month? Yes, I was charged. It, well, she didn't want the phone anymore. I still it was under contract. What'd you do with the phone? I 
I pretty much left the company because of that. I couldn't keep paying that bill by myself. So that's when I told her, hey, Did you know. Did you have a phone, uh, a, a, a new cell phone on his plan? Yes, I had a phone that was on his plan, and somebody else had the phone that he let me use and asked me would I make the payments on it, and I said yes. Well, then I found out I could get a cheaper phone through the government, and I didn't have to pay anything at How's all. How's that sound? Does so that sound I true? To that so place. had that phone belonged to somebody else before her? Uh, it was her, and then I had to give it to somebody else afterwards that couldn't pay that whole payment. I says, well, you know, since you're under the contract, you should still Is try to pay Is she the it. one who got the phone fresh and new? Yes. Okay, so tell me then, according to you, have you paid everything? Well, I paid, like I said, about $450. So that would be everything, because you're saying that's everything. Well, so yes, all you borrowed then was 400 Well, for rent, because of the phone bill, I think should be a wash, since she wanted part of that, too. If somebody else took over the phone contract, then what are you out on the phone? Well, it's basically they didn't want to take it over, and I was trying to get somebody to take it over. So pretty much, I'm, do you have I, a proof of the phone bill no, I from don't. that month that you're talking about? No, I don't. Do you have proof that you paid off the amount that you're saying? Because your own mother is saying you never paid it, and yes. that you have refused well, to see uh, her since last Thanksgiving. It, that's just. What, are you trying to see him, and he won't see you? Yes, he even blocked his phone on me, so I can't even talk to him anymore. Just, did you block your phone? No, ma'am, I didn't, and that's what I was going to get to. The point is, is I have three kids, my grandson staying with me, and I don't, I'm working six to seven days a week. I don't have time to go over and see her like I used to. So sometime around the beginning of this year, she calls me up and asks me for a 60 inch flat screen TV. And I'm like, 40. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I couldn't get it for her. So I was like, you know, I can't do this. So the next call I'll get from her is like, well, I found this thing where you owe me some money. What you can do is get this TV for me instead of paying me this money. I was like, well, I don't owe you any money. She goes, well, we can just call it a wash if you get the TV. So I said, you know, I'm thinking I'll get her a TV maybe for her birthday or for Christmas or something. A couple months after that, she got the TV somehow, I don't know. So she's calling me up to ask me for 400 bucks. Where the 400 came from, I don't know. So when one parent is out of the picture for years, when a kid's growing up, can the kid as an adult ever have a good relationship with that parent? What do you think? I'm going back. I think that you won't get the time back, but I think you can develop a good relationship if you decide to come back and genuinely be a part of the child's life. So you think it can happen? By the way, where are you from? North Carolina. All oh, right. Okay. Okay. Good. What do you think? I'm going to go over here. What do you think? I don't think you can because they missed out on a lot of like time with bonding and stuff like that. So I don't think. So resentfulness is inevitable. Yes. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Going inside the courtroom. But how come you haven't spoken since that's Thanksgiving? What happened with Christmas? Were you both in the same city? He said he didn't have time or the money because he wasn't working at the post office yet. He was only working at Wendy's as far as I knew. And I think his wife was out of a job, so they just didn't have the money to come. The down. promissory note that you found was authored when? What year? 2011? 2000, yes, ma'am. Because that's five years ago. Yes, ma'am. Why in the last five years has this issue not come up? Have you not? You're within the statute of limitations because it's six years, but how is it that if he owes you this money, um, and not, oh, you found it in a drawer from back then. Like, how is it that the issue hadn't come up? How, how, how is it that you hadn't sued him? Because I wasn't then? here and we didn't associate or anything at that time. While well, I was gone, hardly I talked yeah, to but him yeah, every but, now what, and then. then why sue now, five years after, you, you know? The, the because I saw that the date was going out, just like you said, Mel. I thought it was five you're years. On, you're on it? How did you research what the statute of limitations was? I didn't have to research it. I watched you on television. There you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> it's different everywhere for different things, though. Yes, ma'am. I can't, a little part of me can't help but feel that the reason that you're here is to have an opportunity to see your son again. That's one. Wow. Okay. Based on what I'm listening to, even though there's a promissory note, the date on that promissory note is so long ago. I, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Bring me this text again. It won't be this weekend, possibly next weekend. That is supposed to tell me that he's going to pay the that's money? That's what he said, yes. Okay, but you know that's not what this says. What this says is it won't be this weekend, possibly next weekend. Right, it I could be him. he's going to visit you. It could be anything. Okay, but it was about the money. Do you have any texts that actually talk about the money no. any time in the last five years? No. I'm sorry. My verdict in this case is for the defendant. There's a lot you, it sounds like there's a lot you have to forgive her for from the early days. 
And then it sounds like you did. And then here in the twilight of things, when we're supposed to really just be more forgiving, you've kind of just, you know, you're done with it. I just ask you, as an adult child of aging parents, ask yourself whether there is anything about that that you may end up regretting. Um, because it is very obvious from the notes that she writes you even now when she's suing you that she wants your love, not just your TV. You know what I mean? Good luck to you guys. Thank, thank you. you. I hope things work out. You have my phone? Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, so the plaintiff's the first one out here into the hallway. Mom, here, just yes. turn this way and how are you feeling about the case now? Oh, it's okay. At least I got to see my son. He's standing right there. Yeah. He's standing right there. And I just hope that maybe we can be closer now. Hey. I love that. She's talking to you. Yeah, baby. Can yeah. I have a hug, please? I love you, sweetheart. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. You all right? Mm -hmm. You okay? Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Can we go out and eat now? <laughs> All right, Harvey. You know, ultimately, this is a successful small claims court case when two people, you know, who are in conflict, when their family members can actually work things out the way this happened. I've got to tell you one thing legally. The longer you wait to um, go to court and say, somebody owes me money, the weaker your case becomes. It just stands to reason. The longer you wait, the weaker and the shadier the case looks. And that will do it for this case. Litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom, right now. This is the plaintiff, Anna. She says she hired the defendant to replace a slab of concrete by her garage, and a few months after the job was completed, started cracking. Now it's crumbling away. The defendant used a bad batch of concrete, and it looks worse now than it did before he replaced the original concrete, which was over 25 years old. She wants her money back. The defendant's ignoring her. That's why she's suing for the $2,000 she originally paid him. This is the defendant, Peter. He says he only installs the concrete. He doesn't make it. He did, however, offer to rip it out and reinstall. But she told him it took too long for him to reply. And the next thing he knows, he's being sued in court. Bottom line, it's not his problem. It's hers, because he just pours the stuff. He's accused of cracking up a customer. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff hired the defendant to replace concrete, and it almost immediately started cracking very badly. The defendant says he doesn't make the concrete, so it's not his problem. It's the case of the slob screwed up my slab. Thank you, Douglas. Welcome. Okay, uh, Anna, you've asked us not to mention your last name. You are suing Peter and his uh, construction company. You've asked us not to mention your last name or your company's name. For $2,000, the cost that you paid him for a concrete job, which according to you is faulty. Tell me what happened. Um, I called, uh, I know Peter. Uh, through, How do you know him? Uh, yes, I know him through a organization that my husband and I belong to. And two people recommended him, so I. What kind of club is it? Um, it, it's a boating organization. They teach uh, safe boating. Okay. So I asked Peter to come to the house and uh, give me an estimate on repairing two windows and doing this concrete slab. Are you a contractor or a handyman or what? Contractor. Do you have a, a license? I did at the time. At the time in question, you had a license? Yes. Okay, what happened to the license? I, the company is closing. Okay, so go ahead. the company being you? Yeah. Okay, not enough business? Yeah. Why are you closing? <laughs> right. Not enough business. All right, what are you going to do now? Do you, are you doing something else now already? No, no. All right, go ahead. So uh, Peter came, he gave me, my son thought, a very fair price for, for the work I wanted done. What is the work he wanted done? There was this lab by my driveway, uh, 12 by 18, that was uh, cracked, and it, and it was there uh, for a good 30 years or more. And 
and I wanted to have it replaced, and I wanted it slanted a little bit more away from the driveway. For drainage? For drainage, okay. yes. Do you have a contract with him? Yes. May I see it? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so go ahead. In August, he did the work. They broke up the old concrete. They put did you in witness the him breaking up the concrete? Yes, I did. Did they remove all of it? Uh, yes, he okay. removed it. He, uh, they used a sledgehammer to get it up. It took about a week or so by the time he, you know, they broke okay, so it up. Okay, so he pours concrete in there. And when you first look at it, it looks good, it, it right? It looked wonderful. It looked All very right, when nice. When did it stop looking good? Uh, well, I got sick the next month, and I was unable to go outside for quite a while uh, because I had to go under treatment and stuff. I'm sorry to hear that. How are you now? Uh, I got a knock on wood. I'm doing good, thank you. And um, so That's I went out like in, wood. In, <laughs> in March. Somewhere around March, I went out, okay? When was this completed? The following year. Right, so this is what, eight months later? Like eight months later, okay. I went you out. You come out, and what do you see? I, I stood there with my mouth open. I was walking on it, and as I'm walking, all I could hear was cracking. Ugh, let me see pictures. Um, What's happening? It went through the, one of the worst winters we had. I don't know if there was uh, chemicals used on the concrete. What chemicals? Rock salt, possibly. I, well, I don't know. Yeah, there probably was, considering that you folks live in Staten Island, New York. Wouldn't you have used concrete that can tolerate rock salt? What concrete did no, you use? No, no concrete tolerate, tolerates rock salt. Well, some tolerate it a lot better than others, right? Do you do this for a living, the concrete? Because I got to tell you, these are this may be the worst thing I've seen in degradation of a concrete slab, which is eight months old. Are you suggesting that... What? How did this happen? The concrete company. Concrete company I just what? put it down. I don't mi mix the concrete. Well, but she didn't pick the concrete company. This is true. Right. So she's suing you for return of the 2000 that you charge her for this slab because it lasted, well, we don't know how long it lasted. We discovered that it looks like this. Oh, my gosh. Like eight months after you put it in. What's your answer to that? My answer is that I told her I would redo it for her. A, Did a, he a, say week, he, a week before I was going there, then I get a notice that she's taking me to small claims court. All right. Was his answer to you, I'll redo it for you? I called him and I said, Pete, when are you going to when are you going to redo it? He says after Labor Day. Well, like six weeks later. After Labor Day or Memorial Day? Like, like six months later, he would do it. Yeah. Is that what you said? So he says he didn't mix it. He just installed it. Does he have a case? Um, yeah. Come on, the answer is no. Come on, be serious. No, no, I mean, he doesn't have a case. Say no. Uh, no. Okay, going inside the courtroom. <laughs> why would she wait six months? What kind of contractor are you? What kind of, how, why would you wait, why would you think that somebody who paid you two grand for this and gets this and calls you about it and you, you, one would think that you would feel bad and say, oh my goodness, I can't believe that. Let me get out there and fix it right away. She's supposed to tolerate that you're going to wait six months to fix it? And then by what? And then six months later, you close your business, and then she's just stuck with it? No, that's when I was going to do it. Why don't you do it tomorrow? Why didn't you do it that day that she called, do it the next day afterwards? Because I couldn't at the time. Because you're so busy with business? Yes, at the time I was. What's your defense? In your answer to the complaint, you say, tough noogies, I pour concrete, I don't make concrete. I no, I was going to fix it for her. Honest to God, I am just so exhausted at the bad name that people give to certain professions. My father was a contractor. My brother is a contractor. Do you think that if they put this slab down, they could have just turned around and said, oh, I just pour concrete. I don't know, I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll fix it. I'll fix it half a year from now. Do you seriously think that anyone here thinks that you were going to do anything other than rip off the widow who was dealing with cancer? Because that's how you look right now. Looks like you were hoping six months would pass and then you'd be out of business. And then, because as it turns out, six months passed and you were out of business. All right. And, uh, you know, wrapping it down. You got no, no, no. Come on, man. How is this okay for you to do this to another person? 
I was going to fix it. No, I was going to fix it means <clears throat> nothing. Because I was going to fix it isn't, I went to fix it the next week and she wouldn't let me in. You're acting like that's what it is. When you tell a homeowner, I'll fix it, but I'll fix it half a year from now, you think that someone's gonna let you get away with that? Would you let somebody g get away with that against you? No. Exactly. So why do you foist it on her? I was going to fix it. I don't know what to tell you. You're a jerk. <laughs> Seriously, you're a jerk. I mean, I don't, have, I don't have any other language for it because I am sick and tired of watching people take advantage of other people. That is why I became a judge, so that I could stop it. But I have to tell you, it's death by a thousand cuts sometimes. Pay the lady, $2,000 verdict for the plaintiff. Well, tough time in court for the defendant here who comes out, and um, what's your comment on how, how this all went down? I'm sorry it happened, but I was going there to fix it. Maybe you should have gone there to fix it. I was a little busy. I was going there. Yeah. That's all I have to if say. You, if you had gone there, it would have made you look a little bit better. Yes, it would have. The whole way. But I was right. going there. Okay, this way. So he was going there to fix it. Yeah. Is that good enough for you? I was hoping he would have come sooner. I wish he would have called me. He didn't even call me. He was going. I know, I know he was going to, but going and doing is one thing. All right, so now what? I'm just, I'm glad it's over with. I'll, I'll try to find somebody to repair my job. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Harvey. Okay, this is why you have to get a referral or go to the contractor's board before hiring somebody. Something tells me this isn't the first time this guy had a complaint. This episode is brought to you by HBO's The Regime. Academy Award winner Kate Winslet stars in the new HBO original limited series, The Regime. With her nation on the verge of greatness, the Chancellor, played by Winslet, becomes increasingly paranoid and delusional. She will stop at nothing to prove her worth on the world stage or end up a national disaster. From executive producers of Succession, HBO's The Regime premieres this Sunday on Max.